before you even immigrate to Canada, the question that stresses you most is how much is going to be the expense in Canada? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, RNF Breathe. I hope you all are doing well. I am back again with another video regarding monthly expense in Toronto. So friends, without wasting any time, let's just go over to the video. If you are here and visiting my channel first time, then please do consider subscribing to my channel in order to get all the information related to videos in future as well. The first expense in Canada is related to accommodation. The average price of one bedroom apartment in Canada, Toronto is around 1750 Canadian dollars. On the other side, if we talk about two bedroom apartment, the average price in Toronto, Canada is around 2330 Canadian dollars. Again, on the other side, if we talk about the two bedroom basement unit in Etobicoke or Toronto area, then it is going to cost you around 1650 Canadian dollars including utilities like your internet your laundry and your electricity rent of basement or an apartment unit depends on three factors so those three factors are like how many rooms you are going to occupy is it a furnished or non furnished unit furnished means it does come with uh, your bed or your sofa and furniture stuff and the third one is your utilities are utilities included in the rent or they are not included in the rent so basically your rent is going to depend on all these three factors if the utilities are not included then the rent is going to be low if the utilities are in included the rent is going to be high for international students or for a single person, it is always wise to live under the shared accommodation because this way you can share the rent and keep some money in your own pocket. So let's discuss that with an example. Just imagine you are living in a shared accommodation basement unit and it is charging you currently on a monthly basis of 1600 Canadian dollars and you are living with three other students or three other tenants, then the monthly rent is going to get divided in four equal portions and you are only supposed to pay 400 Canadian dollars. Sharing accommodation is a great way to save your money here in Canada. Moving forward, the second expense is your tenant insurance. In most of the cases, if you are living in a legal apartment or a legal basement, then your owner is going to ask you to get a tenant insurance here in Canada. So this tenant insurance basically covers you for an unfortunate event such as theft, fire loss or damage so your belongings are going to get secured under the coverage for tenant insurance the average cost of tenant insurance here in toronto canada is around 30 plus dollars and it is mandatory sometime to get a tenant insurance in order to get yourself covered for your belongings proceeding further the third expense is your transportation expense if you are going to own a car then you are going to pay for a car loan currently i am driving Chevrolet sedan and uh, my bi-weekly car payments are 180 Canadian dollars and on a monthly basis I am paying 360 Canadian dollars for car loan. If you are going to choose to travel by a public transport then it is always wise to buy a bus pass and uh, in Toronto here the Presto bus pass or TTC bus pass is going to cost you around 155 Canadian dollars on a monthly basis. If you are planning to have a ride while going to work or while going for grocery shopping then each trip is going to charge you around 10 to 20 Canadian dollars and it is going to depend upon the distance that you are going to commute going forward let's talk about the expense related to car insurance if you are going to drive a car then you are going to pay for a car insurance as well the prices of car insurance depends upon the city you are deciding the GTA is very expensive area and the prices of car insurance start from 400 plus Canadian dollars for a novice or a new driver here in Canada. Currently I'm living in GTA and uh, I do pay for car and tenant insurance all together and I am using RBC. So all together for on a monthly basis I am paying around 340 Canadian dollars for tenant and car insurance. So it is always wise to go for a combo with one insurance company in order to get qualified for a discount. Moving forward the fifth cost is related to groceries. So groceries include like your fruits, vegetables, your lentils, oil, milk, 
eggs if you are a family of three then on an average basis the monthly expense for a grocery here in toronto canada or anywhere in canada is going to cost you around 500 to 600 canadian dollars so just a reminder the grocery expense is going to depend on either you are going to home cook or you are going to buy a ready-made food from a restaurant and also are you a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian so the expense is going to be based on your choices or your habits of eating proceeding further the sixth expense is related to your cell phone and internet make sure you choose a cell phone plan that is going to offer you the internet plan as well best plan would include enough data and unlimited texting and calling within canada i am currently using talus and my monthly um, bill for internet and my cellular plan is around 70 canadian dollars the average cost of a cellular plan along with internet is going to charge you anywhere between 60 to 70 canadian dollars in canada moving forward the seventh expense is your wi-fi expense at home for students or for anyone who is living Living in shared accommodation this expense can be shared and can be reduced for example if you are a student and living among other three people all together you are living as a four people under one roof and suppose you are paying 100 Canadian dollars on a monthly basis for Wi-Fi at home then this charge will be divided among four people and you will be only paying 25 Canadian dollars on a monthly basis so this is how you can reduce your expense after living in a shared accommodation so it is always wise if you are a student or you are a single person not a family then you can choose to go for a shared accommodation in order to reduce your expenses in Canada. Well is the best service provider that is most commonly used by most of the Canadian and it does offer the internet connection at 100 Canadian dollars at unlimited uses and going upward as well so you can choose your plan whatever suits your need. Proceeding further the eighth expense is related to your entertainment. Canada's life is busy and stressful so entertainment dose is needed and you can reduce your stress by going out for movies or going out for dinner along with your family and friends. Cost for dine out would be around 20 uh, to maximum 30 per person if you are family of 3 to 4 then you can assume that it is going to charge you around 100 to 150 maximum Canadian dollars for one visit. If you are planning to go for a movie as a source of entertainment then you can consider yourself paying 14 Canadian dollar for an adult person. For a family of two, you will be paying around 28 to 30 Canadian dollars. Senior citizens above 60 age or for the kids, the charges are going to be different. And the interesting thing I would like to share with you, if you have a scene points, then on 1000 scene points, you can redeem them towards one free movie. I am currently with Scotia Bank, so they do offer scene points when we spend money through our debit card. So that will come towards the free movies so it is always good to have seen points and use them in order to watch free movies at cineplex here in canada going forward the ninth expense is related to your health and wellness Health insurance in Canada usually covered by a provincial health insurance plan. As I am in Ontario, so our health insurance is covered by Ontario health insurance plan. Dental and eye treatments are not covered under Ontario health insurance plan or any other provincial plans. You can get them covered through the extended benefit through your employer. So it is always wise to go and talk to your employer that they are going to offer you extended benefits or not because dental and eye treatment is very expensive and it can cost you big money here in Canada. Here to stay fit, you can go for gym or yoga classes. On an average basis, the gym membership on a monthly basis is going to cost you around 55 Canadian dollars in Canada. Moving on, the 10th and the last cost is going to be related to miscellaneous charges. In winter, if you are going to buy a winter jacket, then it's going to charge you around 200 to 300 Canadian dollars in order to buy a good winter jacket. In summer, you will be buying summer clothes and if you need to buy anything to decorate your home or any uh, festivals you are going to buy some uh, decorations then it's going to charge you some money so your uh, cost is going to depend on that on for the miscellaneous basis you can consider from 200 to 300 canadian dollars as an extra monthly charges that you can say you will be paying from your pocket going out with your family or friends or the charges for personal grooming would also be included in that so in a nutshell the cost of 
of living in Toronto, Canada or anywhere in Canada is going to be based on your accommodation, the rent you are paying, then your car insurance, your tenant insurance, your other memberships with the gym or for the health and also if you are planning to buy Netflix, anything for entertainment, going out with your family or friends, your Wi-Fi and your cellular plan and groceries mainly. So in a nutshell, you can consider yourself paying around 3000 to 4000 Canadian dollars in order to survive here in Toronto, Canada uh, for a family of two to three people. So you can cut down on all these expenses by budgeting yourself and try to cut down on uh, going out and dining out. So you can always consider your expense and you can try to budget according to that. So friends, that was all regarding the monthly expense living in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Please do like this video, share this video, leave me a comment with your queries and uh, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon in order to get all the notifications for future as well. If you have any personal queries, then you can consider yourself booking one-on-one 30-minute -on -one conversation with me. Thank you and have a wonderful day.